Trev and welcome to my blog Paint Runs and Paint Run Removal more specifically is going to be the topic of this blog so if you've sprayed anything and you've gone into painting and you're going for that finish off the gun you will undoubtedly had a run at some stage I would assume unless you're going for that all over sunpaper finish so yeah I'll tell you a little story back in March uh, 1999, 20 years ago, I closed the doors on my restoration business and a very sad day it was too. I worked next door to a guy called John, John Mkai. Actually, his name was John Kosovich, but that's another story. His nickname was Mkai after the South Park character because as he was talking to you, you go, Morning, John, and he'd say, Morning, Trev, okay. Uh, how you doing mate? Yeah, I'm putting this engine in this car. Okay, so uh, one day he said to me, he says, uh, I was welding yesterday, I got flashed by the welder, and now I think I've got, okay, okay. So yeah, he was one of those characters, but a very nice chap. Nonetheless, one day I was telling him about a run I got in a car. So it's a nasty run down the wing, and I think I'm just gonna have to sand it down and polish it up or sand it down and paint it again if I can't polish it out. He said to me, why don't you put some car body filler over the run before you rub it down? I was thinking, this bloke's off his rocker. I mean, he was a mechanic anyway, but he did do a bit of body work and the bit of body work he did do, sorry John, <laughs> wasn't the best in the world, but it was okay. And um, uh, yeah, so, I thought, well, I'm going to have to paint it again anyway, because it was that bad. So I thought, what he's saying actually makes a bit of sense. So I put some filler over it, as I'm going to demonstrate to you in this video. So I'm not going to go into all the details right now, of course. But it worked. So thanks, John. Okay. And uh, here it is. Here's the video. To highlight on the side of the van where the sign writing's going to go, I've painted this pressed steel detail in a contrasting colour to the rest of the van and unfortunately I've got a few runs in it. I haven't got any runs in the rest of the van and this is the worst part and to be honest with you I'm in two minds whether just to flat it all down, mask it up and paint it again. The problem is I've already got a bit of a step here. I haven't clear coated the van, this is direct gloss and I can live with this masking line. However, if I do it again, it means I've got a mask up exactly to the line again. As you can appreciate, this is gonna cause me a few other issues. So I'm going to attempt to try and remove the runs. So this is the part I'm going to focus on most, although I've got runs in other places. So I've just roughly sketched something out here so that you can grasp a better understanding of what happens when you spray direct gloss or 2K clear coat. What can happen is when the paint hits the surface of the panel, it can very often well up around detail areas. And this very classic spot of what it's done is it's run off the detail area and built up just beneath it into a run. The other thing it can do as well if you're spraying anything with holes drilled in it is you'll often see a small run appear just beneath the hole where the gravity is pulling the paint away from the weld up paint that's welded up around the hole. So I've masked off around the area with plenty of masking paper because we don't want any filler that could happen to drip down land anywhere else on the van. And I'm going to use some fine line masking tape. You could use ordinary masking tape for this. But I'm going to use this stuff because I need to get around this corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask it right up to the edge where the run pretty much starts. And then I can use this point to fill up to. So it'll give me a nice sharp line because if I just put filler along there and there's no tape there, the filler will actually go over that piece of detail. We'll end up with filler in here, and I won't be able to get that filler off. And by the time I've got it off, I'll probably have gone straight through the paint. So I'm going to mask around this line.
And for all of you guys that are going to be interested in what tape I'm using, this is the stuff that I'm using. I'm going to use some metal glaze. This is just quite a thin filler. It's a little bit like the Easy Sand that I did a filler demonstration on not so long ago. So I'm going to use this because this is quite a runny filler. I think you really need to use a runny filler. You can use a thicker filler providing that you can skim it out nice and thin if you know what I'm talking about. So I mean you could use U-Pole Dolphin Glaze or something like that I suppose. Something that's nice and thin and that flows quite well. So I'm going to apply the filler right up to the tape as I said because we want to protect that detail line. What I'm trying to do on the lower of the filler line is just feather it out into nothing. So it just feathers out into the paintwork. So we've got filler right up to the detail line and it ends like a nice hard line along there and it's feathered out into nothing and this will try and help to protect the detail line because when I sand the filler off it would be very easy to press hard on that paint edge and then just go straight through. So I've got a long run that practically runs the whole length of this panel but it's particularly bad right in the center section. Now it's away from the detail line, it's about smack bang in the middle. So what I'm going to do is because the build of paint is far heavier on the top, I've masked off the detail lines, I'm going to try and put filler beneath the run only. So that's what I'm gonna aim for. And then the idea will be to stay on the filler and keep flatting and take the surface of the heavy part of the run off until I go through the filler um, until it's completely flat again. Well, I'll say this is our panel and the red line is a substrate. So this could just be primer underneath the paint. So this is your paint and you've got a run in it. So the run would have been here. And what would happen is if you tried to flat the run out, the run sticks out and you get a block with some paper and you sand it down and without fail you will end up rubbing down the paintwork either side of the run because the run sticks out further you cannot actually reduce the run down to being dead flat and worst case scenario you'll actually flat back down to the substrate meaning it's completely ruined and the whole thing's got to be rubbed down again painted again and the best case scenario is you still have a reduced looking run afterwards because you still have this issue of sanding down each side of the run. You cannot reduce the volume of the run down enough to make a difference. So again the red line is our substrate. This grey area is our painted area with the run in it and the green is our filler. So we put our filler over the top of the run and then what this filler does is it allows you to rub the run down and save the paintwork each side of the run because the filler is packing out each side and then you just keep flattening it, flattening it, flattening it until you get to a perfectly flat surface. Well that's the plan anyway. So this is the stage that I'm at now. This is the detail on the van with the run hanging over the side and I've put the filler over it. I've masked along there, saving the detailed edge because what I don't want to do, as I said, is flat this down and end up sanding right through on the edge, which could easily happen. Looking at the lower section, the filler has been cut off right along the run. So the run is just poking out through the filler. I'll keep the rubbing down very much on the filler 
and just on the start of the run along there what I probably end up is I probably end up hope so anyway where there'll be a, like a little gap so there'll be a little line of filler still left just beneath the run if I sand this filler off first that's kind of what I'm aiming for there and then when I finally get rid of that little line of filler underneath the run as I flat through that that will mean that it's dead level on this lower section you can see that there was a run just hanging off underneath this detail you just see the run underneath through the filler this is probably one of the hardest points of the van to get right but also this is pretty unnoticeable under here you know it's the worst run it's probably a lot less noticeable than the run on the top which is right in your eye line a quick rundown of the materials I'm going to use. I'm going to start with a 400, may even be able to start with 320 on the filler itself. But I'm going to start with a 400, drop down to 600, 800, 1500, 2000. And then I'm going to do the Trizac 3000, 6000 and buff it up. Also going to use a 3M squeegee which is just basically a few millimetres of rubber. I can just use that to wrap some paper around that, use it as a mini block. I've also got a little mini block of wood. This is just a piece of hardwood that I sanded up to nice and flat, nice and small so that it's not too big. Remember that you don't want massive great big blocks. It's just going to be too cumbersome for this job. And I've got my little round rubber block that I use for nibbing out little bits of dust. So I've also got this which is quite flat and of course I've got a little little discs that attach to it. So as I've said in many of my other videos there's a twofold reason for using a coarse paper to start with and that is obviously to rub it down quicker and it is because a coarser paper will cut the material that you are trying to sand down and it will cut it in a straighter line than finer materials will. So you'll cut it first with a coarser material and then you'll finish it off at the end with smoother materials just to take out those harsh scratches. If you start right from the beginning with something very very smooth not only will it take you a long long time it also won't be as flat as if you'd used something coarse that cuts it cleanly and squarely. So I'm actually going to start with some 320 I was going to use 400 but I think I'm just going to use some 320 along this filler I'm not going to deviate off the filler work with the 320 because I don't want to start putting any deep 320 scratches in the surrounding paintwork just literally trying to get this filler as flat as we possibly can so that we can break through into the paint underneath As soon as we do, I'll stop and I'll be able to show you the very tip of the run. So I'm just starting to break through now into the paintwork underneath and we can see that the run is highlighted. I'll just zoom the camera in. So you can just see the paint visible peeking through the filler. And there's a bit more. You can just see the top of the run. So the very highest point of the run is just peeking through. Now you should be able to appreciate now what that filler is doing because that filler is protecting the paintwork around the run so only the run is being rubbed down. I've just done a spot more work with a 320 I've taken it down as far as I want to go now with a 320 we can clearly see the run sticking through the filler or not sticking through it but certainly parallel with the filler and the filler actually looks quite translucent now because we can see the paint underneath 
Don't forget though, I haven't actually sanded down any of the paint yet because that filler is still acting as a barrier under this paintwork. So this paintwork under here would still remain completely untouched. So what I'm going to do next is drop down the grades. I'm going to drop down to 400 until I can see the filler completely disappearing. Then I'm going to rapidly move up the grades until I'm quite happy that the run has gone. Got the camera zoomed right in. I'm only 10 millimeters away from the paint here. It's just an extreme close-up. I can appreciate it's not that easy to see, but I've blocked all the filler off and I've taken the grades right down to 800. So this has just been flattened with 800. You will see that there is a tiny little shiny line along there, which is the dip just underneath what was the run and it's quite faint and it's shiny and it's highlighted because it's shiny and the paint around it is matte because it's been flatted down the rest of the run's pretty much gone we've got a few little bits just along here as well but they are incredibly shallow and incredibly small so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go continue on up the grades i'm not going to stress too much about removing any more of the run and I'm going to go up the grades and try and get the paint polished back up now because once the flattened paint is also polished and glossy again this highlighted area will probably go completely unnoticed and also while I'm flattening up the grades going smoother and smoother I may well take some more paint off and get it even more level than it currently is now the last thing I want to do now is keep hammering away to try and get rid of these little dimples and then suddenly see the primer coming up through the cream paint. So first I'm going to go 1200 and then I'm going to go 1500 and then I'm going to finish off with 2000 grey. Just finishing off with the 3000 and the 6000 Trizac discs. If you want to know more about those, then just watch my polishing video that I put on a couple of episodes ago. And it will explain more about the final polishing stages, including the Trizac polishing stages. I think you'd be hard pushed under close observation to see a run in that now because there isn't one there of course there is just a couple of tiny little just in this area here just there tiny little dimple but apart from that that run is completely gone I've just finished the course 320 sanding on the lower run, the long one that goes all the way along. Now the run, as I said, is above the filler. I've just filled beneath it to take up the step that the gravitational pull has put on the paint, pulled it down, and we've just got a step underneath. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to block along the filler, continue into block along it, and just slightly above it at the same time. And the thought process behind this is that the filler will keep the block away from the paint that's directly underneath it whilst sanding the run down at the same time. Then when the filler is reduced right down to nothing, the run above it should also be gone and the whole thing should remain flat and level. 
This is the right hand lower corner. If I was a betting man, I'd say I'm going to flat right through to the paint underneath. The weatherman says clear again, but soon these tears are here again and it's raining, raining in my heart, raining in my heart. Break on through, break on through, break on through to the other side. Oh well. Most of it come out alright. I've polished it up now because I've had another thought. So it's all polished. This corner's gone through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as an opportunity to make another video. So what I'll do is I'll unmask it. And I'm going to flat it down, mask it up just into this recessed area because this recessed area give us a nice little blow in option. So that's what the topic of my next video will be all about. It will all be about soft edge masking, which is nice. The run that ran the length of this recess all the way along here, in fact, measuring over a meter long, has come out fantastically well. It's totally gone now, perfect. And also the top corner came out perfect as well totally gone there. Something I have used in the past and had some success is using these safe edge razor blades dragging them across a run like that. I've found that sometimes they've worked quite well and other times I've managed to dig the corner in and take a great big chunk out of the paint. It's something that some people find quite useful but I don't think I've found anything as effective as my filler method, for me, myself, this is what I found personally very useful uh, with my own skills limitations and, you know, just it's just my own personal preference. Something that somebody else recommended along the razor blade route on my polishing video was to put some masking tape each end of a razor blade and then draw it across where you've got a dust inclusion and this works really well because the tape lifts the sharp edge of the blade off the paintwork and of course the sharp edge is just away from the paintwork so if you've got a bit of dust sticking up the razor blade will then of course take that piece of dust off and only that piece of dust off providing of course it's on quite a flat surface so thanks very much for that that was a real nice tip that somebody else dropped on me there unused by myself but I'm sure I'll give it a go in the future this is my buddy Rory demonstrating the Festool and Merca run and dust inclusion removing tool this is the paint mixing room at Race and Restoration all the mixing schemes paint chips and gun cleaning and here he is demonstrating how the tools are used. These are the tools that they find the most useful for removing dust particles and runs. Something else you could also consider is a run file. Some people have a lot of success with these. I've used these and got runs out with them, but I still don't find them as effective as the filler method. Thanks very much for watching. I know it wasn't complete success, but on another level it was because now I'm going to be able to make another video for you guys to watch. And also you'll see that blowing in that little corner was absolutely nothing to the amount of work it would have taken to rub that whole panel down and mask it up again and paint the whole panel out again. I'm sure you'll see what I'm talking about in the next video. If you'd like to help support the channel, uh, you can make a donation, there's a link in the video description. All donations will be put towards new tools and equipment to help support Trev's blog. To make new videos guys, that's what it's all about, making new videos. And talking about videos, you're only watching this video this time round because I actually held back from um, answering the huge enormous amount of volume of comments that I got on the last video. It was just totally overwhelming 
and um, I'm so pushed for time at the moment, it was a toss up between answer the comments or make the video you're watching now. And I think most of you would rather just see another video with some new fresh content. So I'm sorry about that. And what I will do is when I get the chance, I will get round to answering as many of the questions as I physically can. Um, so anyway, I'll see you guys next time round, next week, hopefully. So I'll see you then. Bye for now.